Welcome back. Let's talk about geologic age. So relative age compared to this, this thing's older, this thing's younger. Geologic age is putting stuff in kind of like a like a time frame. So relative age, I am older than my sister relative to one another. Or if I were to say my sister, she's in her 30s. Excuse me. That's an age range I'm putting her in. That's kind of like what geologic age is. Before we go on, let me give you the super secret code. Here it is, the whole thing, 526. You got me? 526. One more time, 526. All right, so let's talk about geologic age. So we have something called the geologic time scale. It breaks all of Earth's history up into different chunks. Starting 4.54 uh, billion years ago, this is actually in MY millions of years, so 4,543 million years ago, all of Earth's time broken up into different uh, chunks. Eons, eras, periods, and epochs. So all of geo let me move me a little bit. So all of geologic time is broken up first initially into eons. These are the biggest chunks. So starting at the bottom here, I mean, I'm still in the way. Let me go way up here. So the Hadean is the time between Earth's creation and the age of the oldest rocks discovered. Um, or, yeah, oldest rocks discovered. About 4 billion years old are some of the oldest rocks. So that's the Hadean. That's saying, you know, during this time, Earth was just kind of a hot, molten ball of mess. It took almost five, over 500 million years for, for rocks to form before the surface kind of started to cool down enough. So that's the, the Hadean. And then we have the Archean. So this period of time is roughly when single-celled life developed. Very simple bacterial organisms. And that's all there was from about 4 billion years ago to 2.5 billion years ago. And then the Proterozoic, you start to get multi-celled, soft-bodied organisms, mostly in the ocean. But still, kind of just smaller organisms from 2.5 billion years ago all the way to 541 million years ago. Then all of a sudden, in the Phanerozoic, things exploded. There was a abundant animal and plant life in the sea that spilled onto land. And so when we think, you know, of any organism, you know, that ever really occurred, for the most part, it happened in this small little chunk the past 541 million years. This is what the Hadean looked like as Earth was forming and before it had a chance to cool. The Archean, just simple, single-celled organisms like bacteria found in these lumps called stromatolites, volcanic activity, still some bombardment, the moon was much uh, closer. Proterozoic Eon, this is multi-celled, soft-celled organisms in the ocean, different worms and seaweeds and jellyfish. And then the Phanerozoic is when things we started to recognize popped up. You know, um, yeah. So the fan air is of eon. So that's the eon we're in. So now, now that we have, I'm going to move me again. So we've broken down eons. Now we'll, we also break the fan air of eon down into different eras. Uh, the Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. Fan, is, fan air is oic, which is the current eon, means visible life. So we break that visible life into three eras. We have the Paleozoic, which uh, is Latin for kind of ancient life, Mesozoic for middle life, and Cenozoic for recent life. The way we break up these different eras is by distinctive changes in fossils, um, large extinctions, uh, massive extinctions where there's very drastic difference in animals and organisms and plants from one era to the next. So the Paleozoic era, ancient life, looked a lot like this. Mostly stuff in the oceans, trilobites, ammonites, other corals, other kind of uh, little squids and things in the ocean. Uh, we have some plant life and some stuff making their way up there. Some very early amphibians and reptiles, a lot of bugs. Um, so that's the Paleozoic. Mesozoic, the middle life, this was kind of the age of the dinosaurs. And reptiles kind of are the, the main main um, uh, organism on Earth. And then the Cenozoic, which is the era that we're in, this is kind of when mammals kind of thrived and began to dominate 
after the Mesozoic ended and the dinosaurs went extinct, the Cenozoic is marked by the rise of, of the mammals. So now we take the eras and we can divide them into even shorter units called periods. Now periods are important because periods are the unit of geologic time we will talk about the most. Excuse me. So, uh, but again, similar to eras, these are broken up by changes in the fossil records, uh, new species evolving, some going extinct. Um, yeah, so we have uh, Quaternary, Neogene, Paleogene, Cretaceous, Jurassic, Triassic, Jurassic Park, dinosaurs is in the middle of the Mes Mesozoic, so all of these have dinosaurs. Permian, Carboniferous, Devonian, Silurian, Ordovician, Cambrian, more on those uh, kind of in the lab. And then we can take the periods of the most recent era and break those down into even smaller chunks into epochs. The reason we can do that is because there's just so much information we have uh, for the past 66 million years. A lot of it hasn't been weathered and eroded away, so we still have some information uh, on the detail because everything's new, hasn't been broken down yet. When I say new, 66 million years is still new compared to Earth. But we can break these down into a little bit better uh, time frames, uh, epochs. Again, um, we won't talk too much about epochs, nor eras or eons. What we typically kind of revolve around in geology are periods, if we can, uh, depending uh, if they kind of are 541 million years or so or younger. Uh, once they do get older, rocks and measuring rocks older than that, then we can start talking about uh, the different eons. But for the most part, what we'll focus on are periods. So we're going to go ahead and pause there. Uh, when we come back, we'll have our last section. We'll probably break this up into a couple videos. Uh, so we'll discuss absolute age. See you back here in just a second. <laughs>